AEW Dynamite took place from Garland, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas, and the show was built around a big Texas street fight tag team match with the Young Bucks against Santana and Ortiz. And going into the match, I was wondering, could they have topped the match the Young Bucks had with uh, the Lucha Bros at All Out? And they had a fantastic match. I don't know if it was as good as that, but man, it was, uh, it was a hell of a match. Those matches are going to track ratings. You can't do it every week because I remember when uh, WF was doing it in 2000, they had Edge and Christian against the Hardys and the Dudleys. I mean, they were doing just crazy ladder matches and table matches every week on Raw. So you can't do it every week. It'll wear it, wear it, wear it through. But I mean, that, if you want to get ratings, that's the kind of match you have because people love ladders. They love chairs. They love tables. They love hardcore matches. They love crazy shits. They love tables, especially. I mean, that. That's how you get ratings. Anyway, started the show off. Uh, you had John Moxley go up against Alex Reynolds. Uh, k- killer match, you know, squash match. I mean, you know, Moxley just won in seconds. He hit the knee and hit the paradigm shift. After the match, uh, Reynolds' his partner, John Silver, jumped in the ma- match to attack uh, Mox. Uh, but he got hit with the paradigm shift after the, ma- uh, after the match, too. So they're both laid out. Jericho in the inner circle comes to the ring. Jericho climbed inside to confront Moxley while the others surrounded the ring. Jericho cuts a promo on Moxley. And he, what he does is he's trying to recruit John Moxley to join the inner circle, which was interesting. Uh, but Moxley, of course, refuses. Um... He drew on some real life elements, though. He talks about how Moxley asked him for advice when they first broke into the national stage, which is, of course, I mean, I 100% believe that. He said they became adversaries, but imagine what they could do on the same side. Uh, Jericho gives Mox an inner circle shirt, then laugh. Mox said nothing the entire time. And um, it leaves with the impression that he's not going to actually consider what was going to happen, that, you know, he was actually going to consider it, but they, they left it open. They run through the card. Again, the main event is the big attraction. You have a taxi match. You have the Butcher and the Blade against Cody and QT Marshall. So Butcher, Blade, Bunny come out. All I can see is Bunny. My God, Allie's hot. She looks. Her in leather pants. Allie is smoking hot. Jesus Christ. She looks gorgeous with blonde hair. I have to give her credit. I mean, it's treating her and Penelope Penel before. My God. God, they AEW man. They, they've got some good-looking chicks there, but um, yeah, huge fan of Ali. Uh, I don't care about the butcher and the blade. We just look at Ali the whole match. That's what happened. You know, the head Cody gets the big uh, entrance. His tag team partner is QT Marshall. All I can say is, man, I would rather just look at uh, Ali through the whole match. But it was okay. Match was fine. Uh, Cody is someone who I guess has to have that big entrance where he comes through the stage every week now, but. Um, it was the whole thing with him, this butcher and blade thing. I don't think it's going to get over much. Um, he gets thrown to the outside, and uh, eventually uh, QT Marshall gets pinned. He gets pinned by blade. After the match, Cody's broken the uh, the three celebrate that they won, butcher, blade, bunny. And then all of a sudden, you see uh, Darby Allen run through him. He runs past him, and he gets to Cody. And uh, they they, sh- they go to commercial, and they can see him helping Cody to his feet when the commercial's on split screen. MJF, then uh, when we come back, MJF cut, comes out. He cut, rips into Cody. He mocks his lips, which was absolutely hilarious. He mocks him for pandering to the fans. He calls the fans hicks and white trash. Hey, it's Texas, so I guess was, that's the, what you're going to call it, the Southerners. I guess. I mean, it's the only way you can really sell out to say, you know, white trash. I mean, I'm just saying they had a race, so it happened anyway. Um, he called a grip into into the ring to chastise him for laughing as a uh, Cody um, mock, uh, mocked him. He makes this guy, he tries to make him kiss uh, his ring, uh, and then, you know, he beats him down. He, bo- he bullies him, you know, he be- kicks his ass. Uh, he agrees to face Cody with a few stipulations. He was only going to review the steps here in Honkyville, USA, but on January 1st in Jacksonville, he will review it, uh, reveal it. So he's going to face Cody, and he'll probably face it at a pay-per-view, maybe at, on TV, I'm not sure. Uh, they go to a stupid Dark Order high video. I don't care. I hate them. They have, like, three gothic gimmicks just out of control. Uh, you had Emma Sakura against uh, Big Swole. It was okay. Uh, Big Swell gets the win. They want to push her. Uh, it, it was okay. She gets the win there. I'm not a fan of Sakura on that stupid you know, gimmick. Uh, it's not feeling it. 
A uh, long match. This kind of match you turn into NXT on to see what's going on. Up next, you go to another tag team match. You had Kenny Omega and Hangman Page against Kip Sabian and Sean Spears. Each had uh, their own uh, manager. Sean Spears has Tully Blanchard. And Kip Sabian is with Penelope Ford, who is smoking hot. I mean, uh, she is beautiful. And she participated in this match. She was doing uh, hurricanes, moonsaults. She was fantastic. I love Penelope Ford. She's going to be a star. She has everything. She's you know really young, and she's you know beautiful blonde with a beautiful smile, and she's uh, lo- looks innocent. I mean, she's the kind of girls like um, she's someone who's who can really be be a star. You know, she she has the look to her where. Um, you feel, you know, if they push her right, she, people can get behind her. She can be a major star. And she's very young, and uh, she has a lot to offer. Um, uh, not just looking at her, but and she is, uh, yeah. The Kip Sabian's a lucky guy if that. She's really with her. Poor Joy Janela. He doesn't have her anymore. Anyway, uh, yeah, she did. She was in the match. She uh, dived. You know, she, the her Karana looked cool. Um, Onto, I think she went onto Omega, and Omega, someone who's a big man, woman's fan, he loves woman dressing, so he doesn't mind putting uh, her over like that. Um, what you have is the match goes on for a while, it continues, the lights go out. Oh god, not the Dark Order, and it's not the Dark Order. What it is is basically Tully Blanchard is tied up on the uh, on the stage, and uh, Sean Spears runs out to see what's going on. Who and it's Joey Janela he tied up Tully Blanchard, and it looks this segment sucked because uh, Joey or uh, Sean, I mean, he beats down Joey, and he basically just unties uh, Tully Blanchard. It's like a meaningless thing. He they untie him after a minute anyway, and they fight, and uh, eventually it goes back to the ring. Uh, you have Kip Sabian against Kenny Omega. Omega uh, finishes off Kip Sabian, one, two, three. Um, and uh, he gets the win here. And No, sorry, uh, I, I say uh, Omega. Omega is going to get the win. Hangman Page tags in Omega, and then uh, he hits a, a clothesline from the Springboard clothesline on to Kip Sabian, one, two, three. Hangman gets the win, so he steals it from Omega. They tease the heel turn, uh, so I think Hangman Page, Omega could be a good feud. And, uh, yeah, I think everyone knows Penelope Ford. She is a star. Yeah, there is something to her. Uh, next, you have Brandy, and, uh, man, I mean, her, Br- so first you have Allie, then you have Penelope, you have Brandy, all looking great. Uh, Brandy revealed herself, she took off uh, her outfit, which looked great, by the way, and she cuts this goth, it's this promo on the women's division, it's awful. Uh, she mentions Kong, but there's no Kong here, she rips into Rio, Britt Baker, who we don't see. Um... Uh, you know, uh, she takes a shot at uh, Adam Cole, actually. And uh, we see the chick, she cut her, uh, Kong cut her hair off, and this new bald guy, she just kisses his bald head. It was strange. I, yeah, what is what it is. Not a fan. Uh, you had uh, Chris Jericho and uh, Jake uh, Hager uh, out. Uh, on commentary, and when you had Luchasaurus and Sammy Guevara, Luchasaurus gets the win after the match. However, Jericho and Hager get to the uh, ring. They brawl with Luchasaurus. Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt are there. And they, uh, Jungle Boy gets like this quick pinfall over Jericho uh, to not an actual pinfall, but like just to set up their match. And uh, they announce a new pay per view of AEW Revolution taking place on February 29th. Um, and then you have. Uh, Next week on uh, AW, it's Jericho versus Jungle Boy. It's a 10 minute time limit. So we'll see. I, I assume probably uh, it goes to 10 minutes. And you also have Chris Statenlander against Britt Baker in the Wrong Contenders match. And you also have uh, Lucha Bros against Adam Page and Kenny Omega all next week. Finally, the match we've all been waiting for Tag Team Texas Street Fight. Number one contenders for the tag team titles. The Young Bucks against Santana and Ortiz. Wow, what a match. A lot to recap here. So the Bucks get jumped uh, during their entrance by Ortiz and Santana and Guevara, who was there. Uh, then he had Brandon Cutler uh, run through the save, and there was a power bomb through the stage, which is not the whole stage work, but like a section, which was cool. Um, Matt and Nick hit an ND taker on Guevara on the stage, which was nuts. Nick hits a swanton off the tunnel through a table, which was crazy. 
They brought through the ringside. They used everything. There was a Dallas Cowboy helmet uh, tees. Uh, they put the bucks through tables. They used uh, trash cans, Santana and Ortiz. There was a crossbody off the post. Uh, Nick did a 450 on a trash can on top of Ortiz. Jake Hager ran in and pulled the referee out. Uh, they beat down Jake Hager. Nick got sent through a table by Santana and Ortiz. They doubled up on him, hit him with a low blow uh, for Matt. Uh, Santana and Ortiz hit a street sweeper on Mick, on uh, Matt. <laughs> uh, Nick pulled Aubrey out of the ring before she can count to three, and that was the referee, and that was kind of a controversial moment. Santana and Ortiz uh, tried to get another sweet a uh, street sweeper, but Santana got sent through a table on the floor. The Nick hit a super kick onto a chair into Ortiz's face. The box hit a Meltzer driver onto Ortiz on chairs, and they get the win. And uh, Young Bucks, hell of a match up here. Really enjoyed it. A lot of action, crazy match up here. Uh, really enjoyed it. Um, they they scored a win, and you have Scorpio Sky and Frank Kazarian come in at the match, and they stare him down uh, as the champs uh, to set up uh, the, the the match they're having up. So. Overall, I thought this was a better show than uh, last week, one of the better shows they've had. I thought this was a very good show. I enjoyed the hell out of this. This is one of their best shows. Uh, AEW nailed it this week. You, know, you can say what you want about them. Maybe they've been a, a disappointment to some people. They have been a bit of a disappointment. They're not letting the world on fire, but I thought they had a damn good week this week. You know, uh, Through the main event, through uh, some of the female stars they can have. I think uh, Penelope Ford, I think uh, Ali too maybe i think uh they have some they have a lot of bright spots i think uh the tag team division shined this week uh, i like the stuff the jericho moxie stuff was just okay that was okay but i like a lot of mid card stuff too i thought the the main event you have a match like that this was a fun show to watch so thumbs up i thought they uh they nailed out of the park this week and uh if they have shows like this they're really gonna start to kick some ass